I'm here in the remote Western Lakes with Craig Rist. Now, Tassie Central Highlands is one of the most remote and rugged places on the planet, full of wild weather and tiger snakes, but it's also full of big brown trout. What can we expect, mate? We can expect crystal clear water, mate, rugged country. Um, the clouds are going to change from sun to rain. We could even get snow up here today. Well, mate, it's, uh, it's going to be a bit of a trek. We've got a long hike into these remote lakes. We've got some big packs on. I think it's going to be worth it, though, so let's hit the let's trail. Let's go. You'll love it. Wow, mate, what a place. How clear is this water? It's awesome, mate, awesome. This is what it's all about. They reckon there's 3,000 lakes up here in the Western Lakes, so uh, all small lakes like this? No, they're all different sizes, all shapes and sizes, different levels, and yeah, okay. some big fish, some small fish, it's just, no. Nah. Mate, we've got blue skies, clear water, I can't wait. What are we gonna do, just get the rods out? Get the rods ready and let's go fishing. All right, let's do it. Our plan of attack to catch these brown trout is gonna be to stalk them, so both Craig and I are gonna quietly cruise along this bank here, we're going to keep our distance from the edge and we're going to look as hard as we can, both for fish coming on really tight against the rocks and also just cruising off the drop off there. Once we spot a fish, well we'll make a decision on who's the best place to make a cast. We'll take out the little dry fly, hopefully present it out in front without being noticed and hopefully big brown trout will come up and sip it off the top. Should be pretty cool. Oh here he comes. Oh! <laughs> what happened there? I don't think he took it. He didn't take it, you reckon? Unless he's push, pushed, pushed it off it. the... <laughs> pushed the line out. <laughs> nah, or I just completely missed it. <laughs> well, you certainly didn't strike too soon, I reckon. That was perfect. I was almost thinking, oh, is that too late? But Yeah. Jesus, that was... Uh, <laughs> unbelievable, man. Western Lakes trout, it's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Is that the right area or? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I've lost him at this angle. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh. Has he got it? He's got it now. Oh. <laughs> is that two? I don't know, I think it was one. But it wasn't too early, was it? Or? Yeah, it was a little bit early. Was it? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. It had to happen, I guess. It is. They're pretty slow takers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really slow. But oh, at least he took the fly, eh? Yeah. It would have been nice not to have stuffed it up. <laughs> oh, well, one for one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one all. Even Stevens. <laughs> Nice, nice cast. Yes. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. How good is that, mate? How good is that? <laughs> That's good stuff. Clockwork. Mate, I'm just going to finish uh, chewing on this noodly nut bar I've got in my mouth. <laughs> Trying to keep some energy up here in the uh, Western Lakes. How pretty is that? That's magic. I see what you mean about waiting for that strike, that one just before. I definitely struck too soon, as you pointed out. And I think I was used to like a New Zealand type fish yeah. in a river. Yeah. And you know, this is the first dry fly fishing I've done in 12 months. So there's no doubt I'm not quite used to it. And the take here is definitely much, much slower, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the nice slow brownies, yeah. You're catching them on a dry fly, just stalking them yeah. along the bank. 
I don't know if it gets much better than that. No. Really. And he was feeding on the bottom, but still he came up and took a dry. Yeah, how cool is that? Mate, how good's that, eh? Magic, eh? Prime little Western Lake brown trout. It's a beautiful little fish, yeah, mate, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. So he's taking that dry. He's taking it right down too, hasn't he? I'll see yeah. if I can. Yeah. I'll see if I can just get that out. It's great stuff. There we go. There's that nice, little. Nice girl. It's basically a red tag variant, isn't it? You're calling yeah. it a guide special. It's a guides tag. That's what they call that one. Okay. Well, he we thought it was delicious, mate. And that, that take. <laughs> We've got one on the board now. We've missed one each. We've got yeah. one on the board. Going well. How good is that? Yeah. Excellent, mate. I reckon you should let him go. Let him go. Lovely stuff. Look at that. How cool is that, mate? Well awesome. Done. Awesome Great stuff. Just there. Just there next to that rock, eh? I thought I saw him, but he was, was he going away? He's going away. I'll come next to you. He's over there. Yeah, that's the fish I thought I saw. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, good. <laughs> How cool is that, mate? Well done, well done. A little bit difficult there. The, uh, the sun's obviously gone down. With the, the, sorry, it hasn't gone down, but the clouds come up just momentarily and just taking away our vision. But good sunlight is just imperative to sight fishing these fish and it's, it's chalk and cheese when the, when the sun's out behind the clouds. We can just see so much and you might have you've spotted a fish and as soon as it goes behind the clouds, you've almost got nothing, even in this shallow crystal clear water. You just can't see a thing, it's quite amazing really. But we had a hunch on where this fish was, put the cast out there and he just, Gently rose up, took that little dry off the top. It's pretty cool stuff, isn't it, mate? It's great stuff, man. That's good stuff. Dry fly action, crystal clear water. And I didn't strike too soon. You went perfect. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Good release, I'd say. <laughs> Well done. You can see there's that little, tiny little dry fly that we've been using. What do we call this one again? The guides tag. Guides tag. It's very similar to the old classic red tag, sort of made famous here by a guy I, I reckon made famous was Jim Allen out in these western lakes. It's a bit of a bit of an in-between type pattern, really. It could be a, a beetle, it could be a, a snail on top. Yeah. It could be just a stimulator type dry. So in other words, just a bit of anything, really. But it's working pretty well for us. That guy got away just at the last minute, but doesn't really matter because we're going to put him back anyway. Next fish? Next fish, mate. Let's, right. get, let's get into it. Sun's going. Well, it was certainly a huge day yesterday. Big bush walk. Certainly covered some ground on these lakes. Tell you what, my feet are pretty sore. Luckily, last night it wasn't too cold. What do you reckon about today, mate? Oh, look, today's beautiful. Another blue sky day. That's what we want. The yep. wind won't worry us. It's up a bit from yesterday, but that's all we need. As long all right, as mate. we can see fish, we're away. Cool, as. Let's do it, eh? Let's do it. Yeah, he's still sitting there. So he's directly in front of me, Micah. How far out? About uh, two and a half metres. I've just lost him now. I can't see him unless he's spooked. No, nah, here he is. He's coming, little green fish. Yeah. Yeah, I got him. Here he goes. He's right under me now. Awesome. 
Come on. Oh. Refused? Yeah, he did. Is he spooked? No. Just don't cast at him. I've got one in front of him right now. OK. And he doesn't want it? No. I just... Just try this one. A different fly. OK, you come up. He's in front of me now. So he's on that next rock section there. I've still got him nice and clear. Yeah. See him out there. So he's, yeah. he's about four metres out. Oh, five metres out from the bank. He's sort of moving out a little bit now too. So he's quite away in front of you. I haven't got him. Keep go, go a fair way right. That way? Yeah. How and, much? And he's out a long way. Right. He's on that colour change. You still got him? Yeah, that was... I think he's a bit spooked now, though. He had a bit of pace to him, that one. Yeah. That's all right. I reckon when he saw my fly the second time. Yeah. Yeah. Cheeky little buggers, aren't they? <laughs> they can be challenging. What happened with that first fish? We, uh, we spotted him just through these bushes here. And uh, ideally, I would have liked Craig to have a shot at that one, but I was in a better position because the fish was sort of just down in here and he was further forward and the fish was moving my way. So because I was behind Craig, I had to go, which meant I came down into this little spot here and I laid out the fly out in front and he was just mooching along really slowly. He came up to the fly for all intent and purposes, it looked like he was going to eat it for sure. And he's come right up to it and just said no at the last minute. So we call that a refusal. And um, what I did wrong was I actually, once he'd moved past the fly, I actually recast again. And that made him a little bit sus from that point on because he'd already refused the fly and then he sees it five seconds later. So from that moment on, he's a little bit sus. So I probably shouldn't have put that second cast in. I probably should have waited for Craig to come around knowing that he's got another fly on his rod and uh, a different option and he would have got the, the cast in front. But uh, anyway, you live and you learn. Here he comes. Oh. Craig and I are both sight fishing here in the Western Lakes, so ultimately we're completely reliant on our vision and our ability to spot these trout. We're using Mako photochromatic eyewear, and that's really paramount to spotting fish, is having really, really good eyewear. These, these are both glass lenses. Some guys use a polycarbon or a plastic lens, and they say they're just as good, but they're definitely not. You really need to use glass. And we're using them in, a, in an ambery rose sort of a tint. And, and that's also really good for enhancing some of the colours that we need to see against the backgrounds. Now, we've got a bit of glare here at the moment because we've got this sort of cirrus type cloud, and that, that's what actually creates the glare. We've got sun, but we've also got cloud. Now, people think this wind might be a bit annoying to fish in, but in fact, it's actually enhancing our vision because you can see we've got these waves forming down this bank here. And with every wave, there's a window or a face that from our, from our angle into that face, we can get a 90 degree line of sight. So effectively, with every one of those windows or waves, there's, there's an opportunity to see into the water. So despite the fact that there's glare around, we can still see because of this ripple or this, this small chop so uh, the wind can be deceiving. Sometimes it can be your friend. It was in that dark section there. OK, I'll see if I can get a cast in there. Have you got my fly? Ah, uh, not really, no. By the cast of fish or a rock. As usual, the sun's gone. 
<laughs> Bad luck. Well, <laughs> that was good spotting though in these conditions. And he, he took it perfect. He did. I struck. I had him on. <laughs> Man, we can't. I buy. didn't even see him. <laughs> we can't buy a fish out here. Well, that was uh, probably some of the toughest fishing I've ever had. A couple of days up here in the high country. It's certainly spectacular, mate. Beautiful place up here. Wild and rugged. Yeah, it's a magic place, but it's harsh also. And when the clouds come in like this, it's game over. Yeah. yeah Sight fishing's dead. Definitely, yeah, just took our vision away. But even when we had it, geez, some of those fish just towered us up. I mean, yeah, we got a couple and we, we lost a few more on the strike and a few different ways, but wow, we had some refusals out there, didn't we? Did. we? Yeah, it's tough. It can be, that's what it's like back here. You know, it's not fish after fish, you've got to work for them. Yeah, it's not for everyone, is no. it? you really got to work for the fish. Mate, the scariest thing is this weather, it's coming in. What yeah. have we got to do? We've got to get down to some lower lakes. We've got right. plenty more fishing to do. Right. Hopefully we'll get a, get a good go of them tomorrow. So you're telling me that I've got to carry this big, heavy pack again? Absolutely, mate. Right, right. All right. <laughs> well, here's to it, Craig. Let's go. Oh, show must go on. Let's find some trout elsewhere. So we've come down from uh, last night up in the higher country, come down off that ridge line there, and as you can see, this weather and the clouds really followed us down, mate. It's a bit of a tragedy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but that's okay because, you know, even though we can't sight fish with the sun out, we've still got this cover, okay. and our next best option is this tailing water. Okay, yeah. all right. Later evening, um, fish will come in, and because of this cloud cover, they yep. feel comfortable. Okay. And so we're just going to stalk these bays, yep. and. Instead of seeing the whole fish, we'll just see the tip of their tail or right, a bow okay. wave. And, and so I've never done any tailing fishing, but I've heard that it's pretty well the hardest way you can catch a trout. It's pretty hard and, yeah. and pinpoint accuracy yeah, when you're right. casting, you know. Well, I'm really happy, Craig, that you've picked tailing fish because we did so well up there <laughs> with Polaroiding. You know, we did. With, I think it was, like, what, two, 210, something like that? Something like F that. Fisher's yeah. way? Yeah. Who knows, but um, we certainly got a shellacking. Yeah. Anyway, mate, I've never done it before, but Weather's closed in, it's our best option now, and let's give it a go. Yeah. Tailing fish. Yeah. Got him on. Nice one, mate. This is unbelievable. I cannot believe how cool this is. <laughs> This is the first time I've ever done tailing flight Yeah. Here. By tailing, what I mean is we're in ultra, ultra shallow water here, like six inches of water. And these wily brown trout, can you believe, are able to swim through that and only every moment will they actually put their tail up. And we see just this slight little tail. And you know the <laughs> funny thing? We don't even see them rippling with that tail. All we see is the little slicing fin. It's just amazing how the hell they can get that tail out of the water and not make any disturbance on the, on the water. It's just amazing. What's also amazing is just how difficult these fish are. As you've seen, we've had some incredibly hard fishing. Incredibly hard, I can't stress how hard it's been. We've had refusals on the dry fly. We've had fish take and we've missed them. We've had fish take and we've bust them off um, with unknown reasons. It's just been unbelievable. We've been fighting the elements up here. I mean, they don't call this the, uh, the wild western lakes for nothing, do they, Craig? They do not, mate, no. Nah. It can be tough work sometimes. So we've gone from fishing a dry fly in beautiful conditions, a little bit cloudy, but certainly nice, warm, sunny conditions. As you can see now, we're rugged up. It's pretty cold in here. And uh, we've had to resort to tailing fish. Mind you, when I say resort, probably because it's the toughest way you can catch a fish. So before we're getting toweled up on the dry fly, catching one tailing is probably just the most unlikely way to catch one. But as you can see by this beautiful wild brown trout, that's the way we've done it. I am absolutely pumped, Craig. You want to get him on a little black beetle? Yeah, I, I think so, mate. It's like a little deer hair beetle snail, and it only just sits underneath the surface. Yeah. 
mate. How well good is that? Hey? How good is good that? Good on you, eh? Hey? First, first tailing fish? First tailing fish here in Tasmania, which is pretty well where it, where it mostly happens, isn't it? Yeah. It's been a bit of a triumph, guys. We have really worked hard for these fish, as you've seen. Had so many knockbacks. And now we've had to go and catch one the hardest way possible, tailing in the shallows like this. Yeah. Mate, I am pumped. What we've been using on this trip are Scott fly rods. I've actually been using the uh, G2, which is a softer presentation taper, but today, Craig and I have swapped rods. He's been using this S4. This is a six weight. I've been using a five weight. Both of them are really good out here in the back country. Pretty well all round rods. You could use them in New Zealand as well. Been using uh, scientific angle lines. This is the textured GPX. On the G2, I've had the trout taper. Nice little presentation taper. 12 foot leaders, five pound tippets. It's been good stuff, oh, mate. Oh yeah, magic rod, mate. Good gear, but I tell you what, so far the trout have won. But I feel like we just had a massive, massive victory, mate. <laughs> we have. What a great way to uh, end this trip, potentially. Potentially, yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. There's still another cast. <laughs> right, still another fish. Let's get him back in the water. Right, eh? A magic, you know, mag magic coloration on these fish. There he goes. Go on, fella. Hey, how good is that? Look at that. My first tailing fish. Well done, mate. Western Lakes. <laughs> How good is this place? <laughs>
it's, it's so about unique. all we've got. Yeah, a pair of Makos each. But it really isn't for the, for the faint of heart. You can get snowed on, you can get refusals from big trout, but you can have some beautiful tailing yeah. fishing and uh, the fish of your dreams. It's magic. Thanks for taking me to the Western Lakes, mate. No problem, pleasure. It's been awesome.